Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So, I've been watching my homeboy. Um, no, not Trump, not Trump, but Mr. Is it, is it Dr. Tony Hughes? And as I was studying the Medical Journal of the American Medical Association to catch up on how many people the doctors have killed, I stumbled upon Mr. Hughes and he was talking about, well, something very interesting. I said, well, no, it's, it wasn't Lady Boys. Hey, y'all, let me tell y'all something. I have dealt with, talked to, done business with damn near everybody in this industry when it comes to supplementation, nutrition. Um, I've had a very unique experience with damn near everybody. Tony Hughes of Enhanced Athlete, I ain't gonna lie, he probably, no, that man has more integrity than damn near anybody I've ever met this side of my father. And I mean that in every sense of the way. I've never been able to get him to say a bad word about any human being alive Maybe Robert Toy, maybe, but I don't think he's even said anything bad about him. I can't name exactly what he said that was negative. He states the truth, but the man doesn't down anyone. There's a lot to be said for that, and on top of that, he does everything he's ever told me he would do, he did. I've never heard him brag. He enjoys life, but if you're jealous of that, why don't you start doing so? He's never cheated me one dollar, bragged about one dishonorable thing, bragged at all. Now, I tell you that for no other reason than to let you know that, man, he's stumbling on some things right now that my dad taught me about starting when I was 13. My dad started a nutrition company when I was 13 years old. He was a hypnotherapist. That man walked in the living room and he said, Y'all, um, I'm not helping as many people as I could. You see, you can... The mind can work as clearly as you wish. But if you don't get enough vitamin C, I'm afraid you still get scurvy. And if you don't get enough vitamin D... You're going to get rickets. I can be helping more people than I currently am. We're going to start a nutrition company, guys. We're going to be broke for a while. And he walks out. We got a three-story house on the river. I look at mom and I'm like, you married him. I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> but that's my dad. My dad finds what the way he wishes to serve the community and he started that nutrition company. Within a few years, he was shipping to all 50 states, seven other countries that never touched the internet. Let that kick around in your brain for a minute, boy. Never got a loan either, I don't think. In the beginning, like he didn't, it, he had people that loaned him money, but he never went to the bank, I don't think. The man, he used to say, I'm simply good at what I do. And he was not bragging. He was making a statement that everything he does, he does his best. That man and Tony Hughes remind me of each other so keenly that it's scary. 
my dad stumbled upon some truths that he used to teach me about the medical profession and healing of disease and drugs and you know at the time i'm like 14 i'm like i don't know if they time out but as i watched over the years dad's nutrition company things that absolutely cannot be done were happening which was really awesome to dad and as me as a little you know asshole um didn't have a whole lot of meaning to me except for i loved the way my dad would say it he would say it with such enthusiasm and he would tell me these stories and you have to remember them and now it really resonates. You know, when you see things happen that aren't supposed to, like you have a 70 year old man who comes in with bone on bone in his knees, and you know, I'm a kid, I'm listening to that, I taught this guy, but he starts taking some products that are. No side effects, all natural. Six months later, he comes back in. He said, I went and saw my doctor today. And uh, dad's like, well, how how check up go? He said, I just wanted to tell you that um, I have a quarter inch of cartilage in both my knees. I was bone on bone. He was looking to do the surgery. And I said, Doc, do you think we could check out one more time before we do the surgery? I said, well, I'm not sure why you would want to do that. And he said, I jumped down off the uh, little thing in his office and I squatted down, touched the floor and stood back up and said, I just want one more x-ray. He brought the x-rays in. One, he's bone on bone. The other one, he has a quarter inch of cartilage in both his knees. They were going to do a double knee replacement surgery. Now, I'm sure that was pure coincidence and had nothing to do with the products he took, considering he was 70 years old. It took him 70 years to wear the cartilage out. The doctor said he misdiagnosed. <laughs> you gonna cut on a man you misdiagnosed? How many, how many times did you take an x-ray? <laughs> Sorry. It's a little funny. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of funny. But, nonetheless, things like that. When... Dad gets a call from a woman and says, uh, Mr. Williams, I wanted to tell you, my bypass has failed. Excuse me? My bypasses, they, they failed. The ones that they put in around the blockage going to my heart. That's, and you're still alive. Yes, sir, there's no blockage there anymore. Went in because her heart, her chest was hurting. And thought, this is it. They're going to have to do the surgery. Nope. No surgery to do. Sure, that was coincidence. I mean, these things just happen sometimes, right? Misdiagnosis. I'm sure all those drugs and all those years for nothing. <sighs> you know, when, when you have a man that becomes an acquaintance of yours because he sells you a salve and he's a unique fellow because he's a Mennonite and some bitch don't have a car. You think it's kind of cool to talk to him and he comes in and sells you this little salve that you put on skin cancers and the cancer falls off without hurting the regular skin and you go all right this sounds cool let's see what happens and then you see it happen three different people melanoma and one day you get a call. You wonder where the hell this man went with this amazing blood root crap. They want your 
the government calls you and says, uh, we need your sales receipts. Uh, we are subpoenaing them to court. Please email them or mail them to da 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 da. They put my Amish buddy in prison for selling a cure to skin cancer because he sold it outside the Amish community, which is illegal by your Authorities in power, DEA, FDA, ABC, LSD, I don't know. You know, when Tony, dude, you're a cool dude, but you are getting into some shit that will change the way you look at the world. I saw the passion that you had in your eyes when you talked about that, and I thought, oh shit. You about to do it now, bro. It doesn't take but one time when you see a woman that her child is put on chemotherapy and radiation and about halfway through the chemo her and her son and her husband decide that they can't do it anymore and her child just doesn't want any more of the poison the state comes in and takes the child against their will and all they want is her fucking mama the kid dies. And mama never gets to see her child alive again. And the kid who only wanted their mother never saw her again. You see that shit happen one goddamn time. Sir, everything about you changes. There are some evils by men in government that rival that that happened in Auschwitz it's a sick fucking place and a sick state when your state becomes the murderer of children I will never ever be able to deal with that again how they made it, I don't know, but I know that they were shells of humans that I met and it was terrible. And then when you find out that there's this little lady in uh, Canada, her name is Renee Cassie, and they, they have these documents of her taking in she got this, uh, the Native Americans, or Native Canadians, I guess, um, had this remedy that they used for people with sicknesses of the blood, they called it, or something like that. And they, <laughs> this lady would take in the terminal cancer patients, right? Take them in and help them. The crazy thing is they gave her the terminal patients and 80% of them walked out of that clinic alive. They weren't ever supposed to walk out that clinic, much less alive. 80% remission rate from some damn tea. Why doesn't everyone drink the tea? I drank the tea. Well, for some crazy reason, whenever her clinic shut down, it 
burnt to the ground by the Canadian Ministry of Health. Can't cure cancer. No, 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 no. It would bankrupt society overnight. What would happen to all those nurses and all those doctors and all those cancer walks and all those big ass buildings? It's the number two biggest money maker in the world. Cure that shit? No. Have another soft drink. For real. You shake it, it blows up. That's not a bomb, that's a drink. Drink some. Acidify your body a little more. So you can be one of their casualties. Mr. Hughes, you are dealing with a business that is not only the number two biggest money maker in the world. These people are so badass, they killed 210,000 Americans in 2011. They wrote it down put it in a book and published that for everyone to read called the Journal of the American Medical Association. Don't believe me? Look that shit up. 210,000 Americans died at their hands taking drugs properly and unnecessary surgeries. These are not overdoses. They took them the way they were supposed to and the drugs killed. How many died on 9-11? What would happen if some Canadians ran over here and killed 210,000 Americans, sir? I assure you, Canada would be a parking lot. 51st state. Nobody in it. And I'm not saying that to cause any angst. I'm just saying we took over two countries for 3,000 dead. But right here in our own country, we are being poisoned and doped up to death. And nobody says a fucking word? How? It's pretty simple. Who do you go to if you want to run for office? Man with the money. You need money, right? Gotta advertise. Gotta get the word out. You're gonna change the world. You're gonna do great things, right? Pharmaceutical industry. Make a pill for $30. They give it to you. Cost them two cents to make it. Called Viagra. With markups like that, homie, you can buy politicians. You can fund both sides of the aisle and then if they ever find out what you're doing, you go, do you really want to bring that up? Because I'll fund your opponent next. He's with me. Why do you think they got lobbyists? Hell, if they were angels, they wouldn't need no lobbyists, would they? But they're not angels. They run your world. Think about it. 210,000. Read it in a book. Go get there. Turn out the American Medical Society. Justify it any way you wish. Well, they were elderly. They were, they were going to die anyway. No, they weren't. Those were the people that took it right and died from the dope, dumbass. That's what the book states. These are your friends. These are your family. This is your mother, your daddy, or your child. But be very, very clear. When you kill 210,000 people a year of your own people, one more notch on your damn bedpost ain't that big of a deal. So, Mr. Hughes, I have watched you search for the truth for years now. Now, you've stumbled on something that will see if you're serious. 
I can show you example after example people that no longer have disease that did, but I can also show you many examples of men that just up and disappeared. It's not a warning. It's a uh, something to consider. And if you would like I know somebody with a plan that may just change healthcare and stop the dope dealers of the world. I mean, you know chemicals, right? Look at Adderall. Look at meth. What's the difference? One of them a patent a piece of paper. Somebody paid a lot for an education so they could deal dope to your kid. Yay! Cocaine? What about Ritalin? Heroin? Pain pills? Come on. If it works on the streets, it'll work in a dope house. The dope dealers run the damn world. And nobody talks about it. What about the TV? What about ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN? You ever watch one of them commercials? You really run out to go get the pill that causes anal seepage, instant death, fucking... No. No, 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 nobody does. They don't put those commercials on there to sell product. They pay for that time. So those companies won't say anything about the people they're murdering. Believe me. They have the money to change everything. So they do. A dope dealer is a dope dealer is a dope dealer. Think about it. It's all numbers anyway. Hell, you Deal to one person, you're a petty peddler of drugs. If you deal to 20, 30 people, you're a drug dealer. If you deal to 100, you're a doctor. If you deal to millions, you're a pharmaceutical giant. Works the same with murder. Kill one, you're a murderer. Kill 10, you're a damn psychopathic killer you kill 20 year old what they call those a serial killer if you kill a million you're a fucking king it's all in the numbers you see they protect their interest by wiping out and putting in a cage the man on the corner that sells their dope that gets it for less and what we're doing, Mr. Hughes, or what you used to do, what I'm doing right now, selling research chemicals, is cutting their throat. The men don't like men to mess with their money. So, what do you do when you really know the truth? Instead of doing this sporadically and half-hearted, Go on, do it. Do it. Or let's shut up shop and go home. Y'all, I have a very small audience right now. But y'all are some of the most elite people. And I've never advertised and let y'all come to me for a reason. There is something bigger to be done. And I needed the more intelligent, more driven, ambitious people to help. If you're watching this right now, you're probably one of those people. You may not know it yet, but I have a plan. You're part of it. 
Mr. Hughes, you're about, you're about to be part of it whether you know it or not. The truths that you keep finding are going to call you out one day. And you're either going to break your integrity, which I don't see happening. Maybe. Or you're going to stand up and look Hitler in his eyes. I hit you up later. This should be fun. If nothing else, it'll be a hell of a game to play in our head. A little chess, I would say. Planning the future. Whatever it may be. Keep doing that work. I said the truth will set you free, but it also helps you to see all the people that are in bondage. You're either the kind of person that helps people get out of chains or you're the kind of person that leaves them there. I say we free the world. Let them know the truth and they'll set themselves free, sir. But it must be done strategically and properly or I swear to you they will hang us on the cross. Or worse. Anyway, um... I think it's really damn cool that you're getting into that. Don't half-heartedly do it. I'd hate to die for a half cause. <laughs> Peace, man. Neuroids.com.